Welcome to Maths with EJD. This is the second video on set theory, and we'll be talking about basic terminology in set theory. Okay, so let's start. We've mentioned the idea of elements previously. So let's talk about elements or members of a set. Elements or members of a set. All right, so the so we need to understand that the objects, the objects contained contained in a set are called are called elements or members. For instance, if D is equal to two, four, six, eight. We can say that two, four, six, and eight are members. So two, four, six, eight are elements. They are elements or they are elements or members of set D, of set D. Generally, 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 if X is an object, if X is an element, if X is an element of a set S, then we we can we can write this, we can write this as X belonging to s that is x is an element of s so otherwise if x is not if x is not an element if x is not an element of s what do we write we write that x is not we cross this out is not an element of s. So this means element of, so this means, ele, uh, let me put it this way. If you want to read that, right? You say x is an element. So x is an element. So x is an element of s. Here, x is not, is not an element. Is not an element of S. That's what that is. So we are going to be using this a lot as we pro progress uh, in our studies on set theory. So, of course, some examples will, will always be useful. Let's say that, um, okay, for examples, right? If we have E to be dog, cat, and rabbit, dog, cat, and rabbit so we can say that dog dog is an element is an element of e that is exactly the same thing as dog is an element of e or dog belongs to the set e so you can say it's an element of or belongs to the set e in the same way in the same way if we have f equals one, three, five, and seven. Then we can say here that two, two is not, two is not an element, is not an element of F. Then which can also be written as two, not an element of two, not an element of F like that. So that's, talking about the element or members of a set. Okay, let's move on to another terminology that is important to set theory. And that is talking about representation of sets. Representation, representation of sets. Representation of sets. Now we need to understand that sets can be represented Sets can be represented 
can be represented in different ways. In different ways. One way is what you call the roster, roster or the enumerative form. Roster or enumerative form. That's one way to represent it. Roster or, or enumerative form. So here we list we list all the elements. We list all the elements. All the elements. We list all the elements of the set of the set separated by commas, separated by commas within curly braces, within curly braces, okay? Let's say the set, the set of even numbers, the set of even numbers, the set of even numbers less than less than 10 all right less than 10 can be written can be written can be written as g equals 2 4 6 8 so that is the enumerative form or roster form that is you listing all the elements that way okay then number two okay uh so the number two representation re representation format would be the set builder form the set builder form set builder form set builder form so for the set builder form okay this can be so for the set builder form, right? A set, a set is described. A set is described by a property. Is described by a property that its members must satisfy. That its members, its members must satisfy. Its members must satisfy. So taking an example, we can say that the set, the set, the set of all X, the set of all X, such that, such that X is an even number, even number less than 10 can be written, can be written can be written as H equals the collection of all X such that, and such that can also be dot dot like full colon, such that X is an even number, X is an even number less than 10. So what we have here is the same thing as G, except that in the G case, in this case, we listed all the elements, but in this case, we give we give a representation for all the elements, which is will still match with the previous case. So this is it. In another case, we can give we can have let's say we have another example, right? Another example would be say i is equal to the collection of all x such that such that x is greater than zero. And X is a multiple, X is a multiple of three. So we need all positive numbers greater than three. That is what this is saying. So normally, if you are going to list the elements of this set, right, of the of, for H, for instance, X is an even number less than 10. So that's still two, four, six, and eight. So, you know, you can transform from, from, representative, from the set builder form to the roster form or from roster form to set builder form. So it's all about 
your comprehension. So X is the so you have I is a collection of all sets of all X such that X is greater than zero and X is a multiple of three. So if you want to list this in in roster form, so that will be multiples of three, right? That's three, six, nine, twelve, and so on and so forth. So that's like an infinite set as, as you're going to see very soon. So all positive numbers that are multiples of three, that is what I represents. So you can, you know, you can switch between the two, the set builder form and the uh, enumerative or rooster form. So that talks about representation of sets. So don't forget, in this video, we're talking about basic terminology. So we've talked about elements and members of a set. We've talked about representation of sets, which can be in two forms, either rooster and enumer or, or enumerative and set builder form. Okay. So from that, we move on to the idea of finite and infinite sets. Finite and infinite sets. Finite and infinite sets. Finite and infinite sets. Okay, so let's start with the finite. Let's start with finite sets. So it is uh, good to know that a set is finite. A set is finite if it contains, if it contains a limited number, if it contains a limited number of elements, if it contains a limited number of elements. In other words, you can count all the elements in the set. So if you can count all the elements in the particular set, then it is finite. For instance, J, J is the collection of all numbers, uh, all even numbers less than 10. This is finite because you know where to stop. So J is a finite set. J is a finite set because... It contains, it contains four elements. So J is finite. So another one is this. If you have the set of months in a year, the set of months, the set of months in a year is also finite because there are 12 months in a year. In a year. Okay. So that is K equals... January, February, March, April, May. You know, when you get to December, you have to stop. That means it is finite. So if you know where where an element, where if set stops, then that set is finite. Very important. That set is finite. So this uh, K is finite, right? K is finite because, because it has... 12 members or 12 elements, 12 members. So that is finite. Okay. So now we move on to infinite sets. Infinite sets. A set, a set is infinite. A set is infinite if it has, if it has an unlimited, if it has an unlimited number of elements and a limited number of elements there's an unlimited number of elements and you cannot you cannot you cannot list all its members all its members then you see the set is infinite so let's take some examples say l is one two three four and so on and so forth. So usually these three dots will tell you that the set continues forever, especially if you can see, I, I use the three dots here before December. If something comes after the three dots, that means the set is probably finite. But if nothing comes after the three dots, then it is, it is if something comes after the three dots, right, it is finite. If nothing comes after it, that, is, that means it is infinite. So L now is infinite. It is infinite. Because, because there is no end. Because there is no end to the natural numbers. So the set of natural numbers is infinite. The set of natural numbers. So there's no end to the natural numbers. 
of course, if I say something like, uh, I need a set of all natural numbers less than 1,000, that is still finite because, you know, once you start counting from one, uh, as, as you get to 999, nine, nine, uh, that is the end. All right. So if, uh, even if it is 1 million, that is still finite. But if it is just open-ended uh, and you just, you're just talking about natural numbers, that is infinite. Okay. So another example will be the set, the set of all points, the set of all points on a line, the set of all points on a line is infinite, is infinite because, because a line, because a line extends indefinitely, because a line extends indefinitely, indefinitely in both directions, in both directions, directions. So if you have a line, if you think this is all that there is about the line, you can still extend it either way. You can keep extending it forever and ever. So that's why the set of all points on the line is infinite because the line extends indefinitely in both directions. Okay. So it, now let's talk about equal and equivalent sets. Equal and equivalent sets. That's also another terminology, very important. Equal, equal, and equivalent sets. Equivalent sets. Equal and equivalent sets. So first of all, let's talk about equal sets. Equal sets. Two sets are equal. Two sets are equal. Two sets are equal. If they contain, if they contain exactly, exactly the same elements, exactly the same elements, regardless, regardless of the order, regardless of the order or repetition of elements. So set doesn't care about repetition. So if you have one element repeated, one million times, as far as set is concerned, it is seen as one. So regardless of the order or repetition, or repetition of elements, of elements. So let's see an example. If M, M is equal to one, two, three, all right, and N is equal to three, two, one. So you see the order doesn't matter and n is three to one then then m and n m and n are equal m and n are equal because because they contain because they contain the same elements they contain the same elements And we can write, we can write, we can write that M is equal to N. So the order or repetition is not an issue. Okay. So another example, if we have a particular set P, which is equal to A, B, C, and we have set Q, which is equal to A, B, B, C, C, okay? Then it is clear, we need to know that then P and Q are still equal. P and Q are still equal. P and Q are still equal because the repeated elements, because the repeated, the repeated elements B and C in Q do not do not add anything new. Do not add anything new. So repetition in sets does not add anything new. So this and this are still 
equal because they contain the same number of the same elements, the same number of elements, repetition or no repetition. Okay. So having talked about equal sets, let's go for equivalent sets. Equivalent, equivalent sets. Equivalent sets. Now, when do you say sets are equal? Two or more sets are equivalent. This is when you say that two sets are equivalent. Two sets are equivalent. Equivalent. If they have, if they have the same number of elements, if they have the same number of elements. So, you know, they look, these two ideas look alike. Two sets are equal if they contain exactly the same elements. So if they contain exactly the same elements, but here the, on, for equivalence now, it is focused on the same number of elements. So two sets are e equivalent if they, are the if they have the same number of elements. That is, they have, they have the same cardinality. They have the same cardinality. As you're going to find out later, the cardinality of a set is the number of elements it contains. That is, they have, they have the same cardinality. But, but the elements, but the elements, but the elements themselves may be different. But the elements themselves may be different. So in the case of equal sets, right, the elements are the same. For the sake of for for the sake of equivalent sets, it is all about the cardinality. So same cardinality. So if equi equal sets, same same elements, equivalent sets, same cardinality. I think that's where the difference lies. So, but the element themselves, but the element themselves may be different. May be different. Okay. So, um, let's take examples. If Q is one, two, three, and R is A, B, C, and R is A, B, C, then, then Q and R are equivalent. They are equivalent because because both have three elements, because both have three elements, three elements. So because of that, because of that equivalence, we can say, we can say that Q, the cardinality of Q is equal to, is equal to the cardinality of R, okay? So like we say, this whole thing is, Cardinality, cardinality, cardinality of Q is equal to the cardinality of our cardinality, cardinality of R. So their cardinalities are, if the cardinalities of two sets are the same, then you say they are equivalent. So equival, equal sets contain the same elements. Equivalent, set con, uh, equivalent sets have the same cardinality. That is, they have the same number of elements. So equal sets, same element, equivalent sets, same cardinality, like I keep emphasizing. All right. So let's take one more example on this. If S, S is equal to apple, orange, and T, and T is equal to uh, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. So we can say that S and T, S and T are equivalent. And the reason is that they have the same number of elements. Are equivalent sets because, because each set has two elements. Each set, each set has two elements okay all right so that brings us to the end of this second video on set theory talking about basic terminology 
But before we go, you may want to try your hands on some things. So we've talked about how to represent. We have talked about the. Uh, we've talked about elements and members of a set. We've talked about um, a representation of sets. Then we went on to talk about finite and infinite sets, and then equal and equivalent sets. So maybe some practice here. Let's say, let's have some practice questions. Practice questions. So if you have set A, set A is L, M, N. Set B is, set B is, L, L, M, N. Then you have set C to be I, J, K. Set C is I, J, K. And finally you have D to be, uh, say, L, M, M, N. All right, so tell me, which, so given that, given all that, which sets are equal, which sets are equal? One, two, which sets are equivalent? Which sets are equivalent? Okay, simple task, which sets are equivalent. All right. So with that, we come to the end of this video. So if you have not subscribed, be sure to do that. Hit the notification bell also so you can get alerted each time a new video is released. And don't forget to comment, like, and share. See you um, as we go uh, for the next video. Bye.